you. Um, I just want to start by saying how incredible it is to be here today. Like, I feel this is better than any conference I've ever been to ever before. And it's, just, like, um, and it's reminding me, um, I think, of something. So I, I left academia after my master's because I just was like, I can't be here. Um, and, but I think it's so amazing to, to see you guys because it reminds me that I think the value of what you can do while you're here is to subvert and to be as, as much of a saboteur as you can be, and I think that's what you guys are doing. Um, and so on that note, I wasn't going to read this poem, but I want to now, um, and it's called A Virtue of Disobedience. Um, and I wrote it for a book that is called A Virtue of Disobedience by Asim Qureshi, and it's a book that is also rooted in Islamic epistemology to try and think about what it would mean to disrupt, and uh, the kind of, um, that it's kind of incumbent upon us to disrupt. Um, so I'm going to do this one, and then I'll do another one quickly afterwards. So, a virtue of disobedience. We are the disobedient. Look upon us and despair. For we outlast history, time and memory. We are always there. We are the unquenchable thirst for justice. The bodies that do not bend. Tongues you cannot straightjacket and eyes that will not be turned blind. We are the step you trip on in the night. The nightmare you wake from but cannot recall. The lump under the rolling hill that reminds you what is buried there. We are the disobedient. We bear witness and we testify. We love despite the lie that we are not worthy. We hold despite being told we should hide. Yes. We are the disobedient who refuse to die. For bodies without eulogies will never remain in their graves. We are the ghosts of the unmourned and the spirits of the never grieved. We are the original traitors to the tireless tyrant. We are Muhammad. We are Malcolm. We are Moses and Asata. We are Tucson and Bashani. We are Rosa and Rabani. We are the disobedient. Truth speakers with tongues of fire, knowledge seekers who provoke your ire, mouths always moist from sincere prayer, we are hearts beating for the truth. Not like fluttering birds in cages, but like the earth in her final convulsions, like mountains when they scatter to dust. We dismantle, uproot, expose, we are the disobedient. And we have come not to claim what is yours, but what is and always was ours, our humanity. But no, not claim, for it was always with us, and our announcement of that is the blasphemy you burn us for. There's a reason you mustn't play with fire, because the flames are not bound by only your aims. If you burn our bodies in the morning, the fire will be licking your heels that night. Do you feel secure then, when we are bound not by law, but justice? Loyal not to penmark on paper, but truth. We are unconquerable and unmanageable, because you can take what you want when all you want is to take. We are your greatest fear, fearless, loyal not even to life. There is no bargain to be made then, for disruption is our only security. In a world which says security is ensured only through our oppression, what basis has such authority to be obeyed? No. We are the disobedient who refuse to know our place, undivided, low and mighty. We are a we, a unity, a community, a principle above place. We are the disobedient. We declare the emperor naked and don't kneel before the queen. We smash the idols, confront the pharaoh, upend the fabric of the world. We will not sell our souls for hallowed halls. We cannot be unmoved. We are the disobedient. We exceed the boundaries, overspill and overspeak. We are unboxed, unharnessed, unfathomable, unpalatable, uncompromising. Oh, Ozymandiases of the world, do you really think yourselves kings of kings? How quickly you forget. Nothing outlasts the fading of the day for the light of truth itself. Um, I'm just going to do one more um, and move on to you guys, but um, this is directly related, I think, to the conversations we're having today. Um, this is a poem that I wrote for a project called Where's My Past? Um, and it's a Birmingham-based project uh, all about decolonizing histories. Um, and I, I did my undergraduate in history at Cambridge, so you can imagine how bad that was. Um, <laughs> um, so with the question of where my past is, um, I think about it in several ways. You know, physically, where is it when um, you go to the archives and you're part of an oral history and oral culture? Where is it ideologically when you learn politics and philosophy, but then you learn alternative philosophies and oriental philosophies? Um, and where is it when um, you kind of exist as a woman of colour, when you look at women's history and we're not there, and you look at immigrant history and you're not there, and you, look at co and you kind of fall between all the floorboards? Um, so this is my response to where is my history? 
My history is imprinted in the spaces between the ink printed on pressed pages. My history is the screams shouting out through the silent slots and syllabi. It is caged in glass cases, said to be for its own safety by the institutions which narrate it as their own. Because my history lies in the choices not recorded about which stories should be hoarded and called archives. And my archives are the chicken shops, the taxi stops, the back seats of rentals, the inside hems of headscarves, women's conversations, women's congregations, women's contemplations, which you won't find in your local heritage site. No. Because my history is the shame of your history. Because my history is the shame of your history. The body buried in the back garden with no gravestone, but in fact not so shameful, no. For it is also adorning your proudest buildings, the ones I've searched before entering as if my bringing something in would be disturbing, as if my things weren't already coveted and stolen, sorry, we salvaged and reallocated, <laughs> to make up these museums in the first place. Yeah. It's almost as if history is less about what happened than maintaining ideology. Because when you investigate a story with half the participants absent, and don't worry about the translation, want only to fit the narrative to the nation, then is it surprising that what's surmised is that my history is not. That my past is culture, and ancient kingdoms, never politics or philosophy. My ideas are religion and oriental, tribes, norms and alternative remedies. Whilst yours are universal teleologies and superior methodologies. No. It's no surprise my past is passed over and pushed into the peripheries despite being palpable in every premise of what gives Britain history. Because to find it would be to remember that if Britain is Tudors and Victorians, it's also slavers and plantations, the colonies and the colonized. To find my past would be to remember that every object in the museum that is said to be objectively seen was plundered and stripped of value for the perusal of researchers and big purses to win awards and spectate. Whilst those of us who are still seen as backwards, who don't get the time or space to explore artifacts, are in fact the outcome of their unnarrated relations to colonial thunder and salvation. So when you ask where my past is, ask instead what yours is without mine. Mm -hmm.